welcome to Core Moves. So today we're going to do some work on the TRX or on the suspension system. I'm back in the studio so I have my suspension system um, anchored to the ceiling and it's a four point rope system but you can still use whatever sort of suspension equipment you have. Okay. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is just focus on our pelvic placement. It's really important when we're doing any suspended workout actually in all workouts, to make sure that we're protecting our lower back and this sort of pelvic girdle from the pubic bone up to the lower rib cage, because this is where a lot of people tend to get um, pelvic dysfunction or lower back issues. So we'll just review the uh, pelvic positioning before we start. So I'm going to come in close so you can see here. So one of the things we talk about a lot through Pilates and in all of my videos is your neutral spine. So when you have a neutral spine, it means that these little bony landmarks at the back of your pelvis, these are called the PSIS, or posterior superior iliac spine, okay? Nice big long word. So those bumps there, and then on the front of your hips, if you drop your middle fingers forward, you feel the two bumps right, the, the two bumps right at the front of your pelvis. Those are called your ASIS, or the anterior superior iliac spine, okay? So those two bumps, when you landmark them with your fingers, in a neutral pelvis on a man, they are completely horizontal. So you can see they're on exactly the same horizontal plane there. But for women, because of our, the way our pelvis is designed for childbirth, we have a slight five degree anterior tilt. So that's tilting towards the front. So you'll find that the front ASIS is slightly lower than the PSIS in most females. Now, depending on your um, natural postural positioning, some people are lardotic or have a lardosis, which means they overextend, hyperextend the lower back. So too much curvature here, sticking the bum up, dropping through the belly, and this causes long and weak abdominals. Okay, or their sway back, which means they tuck the pelvis under and bring the weight back behind the heels. So, and then the head comes forward. So you're trying to counterbalance that weight. So when we talk about our neutral spine, we're stacking the body up so that our middle of our thigh bone comes directly over our ankle bone, on the lateral, lateral malleolus of the ankle. The thigh bone comes directly over that bone. And then through the middle of the rib cage, you wanna check that that pelvis is in your neutral spine. So for me, that's my nice neutral. I can feel my abdominals are connected here, right down deep in those deep layers of the abdominals, okay? And then you wanna pull your rib cage up and back so that your shoulders, the middle of your shoulder then, is stacked again right through that line and then through the earlobe. Okay, so that's your nice neutral spine. And if you think about this string coming right through the middle of your body, through your pubic bone, the belly button, the middle of the rib cage, the sternum, the chin, and then through the crown of the head, you want to feel that lengthening in that whole string. And you contract through the quads, get that pelvis in that nice neutral position. So we're going to start with some pelvic tilts. So the way those look is we're moving the pelvis from our neutral to an imprinted or braced or supported position and then back to neutral. So you can see how my pelvis, I'll change my shirt here so you can, the line on my shirt goes with my bony landmarks. So that's my PSIS, that's my ASIS. So in my neutral I have that 5% anterior tilt. Now I'm going to imprint, this for me is quite hard because I am lardotic, so I'm going to contract my obliques, these are the muscles down the sides of your abdomen, I'm going to pull those closer together, so my ribs come closer to my hips, and my hips come closer to my ribs, and you can see that curvature on my lower back then flattens out, which means that I'm in a supported position or an imprinted position in my spine, okay, so quite often we call it tucking under, or if you do do, if you do do, if you do Pilates, then that would be your imprint position or your supported, your supported position. Okay, so now the glutes obviously are helping to tuck under, but we want to make sure that it's not coming all from the glutes. It needs to come from the abdominals. So if you put your fingers on the, that front bony landmark and then your thumbs up on your bottom of your rib cage here, and as you exhale, think about squeezing the two of them closer together. So take a deep inhale and then exhale. And you can see I've shortened that space. And then inhale, tilt the pelvis forward, lengthen the ribcage back up, and open that space back up. Exhale, closing it back in. Inhale, 
lengthening it back out. So you can see it's not a huge movement. Inhale. And of course my glutes are coming into action, but I'm starting the movement with these obliques here. And then finishing it with the glutes. And then lengthening back that imprint, okay? So it's important to start most of your workouts with a couple of pelvic tilts just to remind your body where it is in its pelvic position. Or right, from there, let's just warm up those shoulders real quick. So a couple of big shoulder circles back. One more for me backwards, and then a couple of shoulder circles forward. Three, two, finding that balance on your feet. One, now we're gonna reach those arms out to the side. Really engage through the fingertips. So you feel like you're reaching with all of your might through the fingers, and we're gonna do tiny little circles forward. So this is where we first engage our core. So I'm really pulling my belly button in towards my spine so that my body isn't flopping around like this with the movement. My belly is really pulled in tight. My legs and my glutes are working to keep me connected and tall on top of those legs. My feet are hip distance apart. I'm feeling long through the crown, and I have a soft bend in my knees, so I don't hyperextend in them. We're moving forward still, tiny little circles, and three, we're gonna move backwards, two, one, little circles back. So waking up the back of the shoulders now, so through those posterior deltoids, the lats, the serratus anterior, working through the back extensors, and still those abdominals contracting. Your abdominals actually wrap, your deep transversus abdominals wrap around from your back, from your spine and below the rib cage, all the way to the front to your belly button. So it's quite a broad sheet muscle. We're finishing off three, two, one, and lower the arms. From here, we're gonna hinge the body forward. So just keeping that spine nice and long, belly connected, stick the bum back, soften the knees, and hinge the body forward. And you're just gonna reach the arms out in front, and then swim them out wide to the side till they come back behind you in extension. Sweep them forward, open them out wide to the side, back behind you. Sweep them forward, open out back, last one. Sweep it forward, palms facing the floor and then palms facing each other. Now we're gonna change direction. So palms face the floor, you're coming out to your airplane. Reach out in front, palms are facing the floor, turn the palms towards each other, drag them down by your hips. Okay, and then they come back again. Palms start to circle around facing the floor as you reach those hands forward, palms face each other. Bring those shoulders back into extension. Keep pulling that belly button towards the spine and bringing it back, last one. And bring it back and stand up nice and tall. Let's come to our suspension system. Okay, so I obviously, being suspended from the roof, my apologies if I forget to tell you how to set up your handles properly. Just use your common sense to make sure that you're feeling it in the right place and that you can move free. If you need to, just pause and set up your apparatus so that it feels comfortable. Number one rule always is make sure that your straps are even. So I'm coming so that mine are hip height when I have tension in the ropes, okay? So if you think my anchor point is behind me, then I'm going to step forward to the end of my mat reach my arms overhead, and then just give a gentle lean. So I'm out of the picture here a little bit, so I'll just hold my ropes a bit higher. And I'm coming into a gentle lean so that I can feel my abdominals connecting and my shoulders connecting. And then exhaling, pushing yourself back up and lowering the hands back. So this is gonna look a little bit different on me because otherwise I'm out of the picture. I'll try and come back, actually. So again, hands are in the strap, we're inhaling. And then we're gonna come forward into a little bit of a lean, connect the belly, hold, breathe in, and then exhaling to come back. Now your heels are gonna come up with the movement this time. So we're gonna inhale, lift up those heels, exhale, come into a proper lean now. So you wanna have that nice long angle, long through the crown of the head, squeezing the glutes, and exhaling, bringing it back and lowering those heels. Inhale, lift the heels, exhale, come out to that long line. Inhale to hold. Exhale, bringing it back, and lowering the heels. We're gonna do two more like that. I keep stepping on my foot rope. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lean. Hold, breathe in deep. And bringing it back, lowering the heels. Two more. Lift, lean. Don't forget about the back line of the body. Hold, pulling it in. So you'll really feel this right underneath the rib cage in those deep abdominals. Last one, lift, lean, hold, 
and bring it back. And lowering the heels. We're going to add on from here. So inhale, lift the heels. Exhale, come to the lead. Now keeping the pelvis square, so your hips are square with the edge of your mat. Your shoulders are square. We're going to pull the right arm in, and then the left. So we're moving bilaterally here without shifting the torso. So we're adding in the multifidus down the back of the spine to control our body from twisting or weaving. And those back extensors are, are working just as equally as our abdominals to keep us in this lean. We've got one more on the right, one more on the left. Reach them both out long, hold, and then bring it in. Good job. From here, we're going to do a little gentle hold down. So I'm not, that strap is bugging me. <laughs> Nod your chin. Roll your, your chest down, peeling your spine away from that imaginary wall behind you till you come into a nice rounded turtle shape. And then send the tail out long, lengthen the spine, reach into those arms and find that nice long stretch. Inhale here. Exhale, tuck the tail under, pull the abdominals up towards the ceiling, squeeze the glutes, find that connection in the legs, roll and stack the spine back onto that nice neutral alignment. Inhale, exhale, nod the chin, roll it down. Lengthen away. Soft bend in those knees as we come to that long line. Inhale, exhale, and curling it up. And lengthening all the way back up to that neutral spine. Good. We're going to swim now. So from here, stand, you want your anchors to be behind you or your suspension point to be behind you. And we're going to come up onto the balls of those feet again. And we're going to come forward into that lean. So you reach your arms forward, your palms are facing each other here. And we're in that long lean. Then we're going to turn the palms towards the floor as we swim the arms out back behind us, bend the elbows in. So you'll see that my body comes up a little bit with that movement. And then I dive forward, swim it out. Bring it in, dive forward, swim, and in. So it's like a breaststroke, open wide. You really have to have that control in the shoulders here or reduce your range of movement, okay? If it doesn't feel good for you in your shoulders, then bring the feet down, walk out a little bit further from your anchor point so that there's less of an angle, and just do the circles like this, okay? So pick the difficulty that feels best for your body. If you're really strong in your shoulders, you can even come closer to your anchor point so you get more of a lean and really feel the shoulders working through that pull. For me, I'm somewhere in the middle, so I'm gonna come for three more, reach it out, swim it out wide, pull it in, reach, pull it in, keeping those wrists nice and long throughout, and pull it in. Lower the heels, nod my chin, roll myself down. Nice spinal flexion, lengthen the spine into that nice long line, soft bend in the knees. Inhale, get a nice stretch through the shoulders here. Exhale, curl the tail, lengthen all the way up, pull the elbows in towards the spine. One more time. Inhale, exhale, nod the chin, roll it down. Articulating through that spine and then lengthening, stretch through those shoulders. Exhale, curling it under. Peeling the spine away from that imaginary wall in front of you and lengthening back up to a neutral position. Good. Now from here, we're going to add on some lunges. So you're going to, again, be lunging away from your anchor point. Your hands are relaxed in the straps, okay? So when you lunge forward, you want to be able to come to a point that your hands don't come back behind your ear, okay? So if you lunge and your hands are behind your ear, adjust the length of your, of your ropes so that you... Um, so you want to shorten them, okay? So the key here is to really think about that stability in the core. So take a minute to just set your pelvis up, get in that nice neutral alignment. Think, pull the pelvic floor up. So for women, we know what our pelvic floor is. For men, if you think about the way it feels when you walk into really, really, really cold water and you get that feeling. That's lifting your pelvic floor. So a lot of men don't realize they have one, but your pelvic floor is this tiny little hammock that supports all of your internal organs in your, in your abdomen. Okay, so it's quite an important muscle, as well as other functions that it has for both men and women. Anyway, so we're going to come into our lunge, so you need to lift up on that pelvic floor, connect the belly to the spine, pull those shoulders down and back, nice and relaxed. So our arms are coming along for the right here. We're going to come up on the ball of the right foot, Find that stability in the left leg, 
and we're going to lunge forward and reach our hands straight forward. So I've got a nice long lunge here, my left glute is squeezing to find that nice opening through the front of the left hip. My hands are reached forward, but if I were to let go of my straps, I'm not hanging on for dear life with them. Now they're there for support, okay? We're going to inhale here, and then as you exhale, you straighten that front leg, and this is where you find the core, you push into your straps, and you pull yourself back to your starting position, okay? So one more slowly, up on the ball of the right foot, pick the leg up, lunge it forward, arms go straight ahead, squeeze and hold, inhale, exhale, push away, and bring it back in. We're going to move a little bit faster now, so inhale, exhale, lunge, inhale, exhale, pull it in, inhale, up on the ball of the foot, exhale, flick and lunge. Inhale, straighten the leg, exhale, push into those straps. Now you need to really push those straps where you get this, woo, your body wants to rotate because you have to control it with the abdominals. Put it down, inhale, exhale, lunge. Inhale, exhale, pull it in, find that left oblique. Inhale, exhale, lunge. Inhale, exhale, pull it in. Okay, again, if the breath becomes confusing, just keep breathing. It's more important that you keep breathing then you hyperventilate because you're trying to keep up with my breath sequence, okay? We've got two more. Pulling it in, last one. Lift, lunge, lift, and bring it down. We're gonna move straight over to the other leg. So find that balance in the right leg, come up on the ball of the left, of, uh, ball of the left foot, pick it up, lunge it forward and reach. Push it up and bring it down. Pick it up, lunge and reach. We're going to change the arm movements this time, so stick with me, listen to the cue. As we reach, we're going to open the arms up to a Y. So just opening through the chest a little bit differently and bringing it in while we work that other leg. Lift it up, open to a Y, pull it up, abdominals control you coming back in. Lift it up, Y, pull it in. Really find that pec, the pectoral muscle connection, so you reach it out. Then you're squeezing under those armpits. You're working through the front of the pecs and the lats to pull yourself back up along with those abdominals. We've got four more. Lift it up, lunge, pull it in, and center. Three, lunge, abdominals to pull you in. Center, last two, lunge, lift, and in, last one. Lift, lunge, up and in. Good. Transfer the weight back to the left foot. Come up on the ball of the right foot. This time we're going to lunge forward and we're going to open our arms like an L. So the left arm comes forward, right arm goes out to the side. So pick up the knee, lunge it forward and reach that left hand and the right hand comes out to the side. Now from here, stay in that lunge, contract the glutes, pull the belly in and then twist the body to that right side to open the chest and the spine and hold. Then bend the back elbow, unravel the body, face the front in your, your first lunge position with the arms straight overhead, and then twist the body to the opposite side, to the left side. Really rotate on that spine like you're a corkscrew. Reach those hands away from each other. Inhale in that twist, bend that left elbow, and then exhale, turn back to your center lunge. Now open that right hand back out to the T, and this is where you really need to find that core. You're going to inhale, straighten that front knee. Exhale, keep pushing into those straps in that T. And bring the body back up to center. We're going to do the other side. So this time your right arm's going to reach forward, your left arm out to the side. So come on the ball of the left foot. Find that core connection. Pick the knee up with the abdominals. Reach the hand and the leg forward. The left hand comes out to the side. So your body is still squared to the front here. Inhale, and then as you exhale, rotate. Reach that right arm farther away from you and twist your spine like a spiraling corkscrew. Reach that left hand nice and long behind you. Inhale, exhale, bend the elbow and twist to the front. So you're back in your forward lunge. Inhale here, exhale, pull the right elbow back, twist the spine to the opposite side. So we're twisting to the right now. Really reach through those arms. Inhale to hold, exhale, bend the elbow, Come back to the front. Inhale, exhale, open the left hand up to the, out to the side, but keep the body square. Take a nice inhale, straighten that front leg, and then exhale, pushing into the straps, finding those abdominals, and bringing the knee back in. Let's do that one more time. 
So we're coming up on the ball of the right foot. Remember, our left hand's gonna reach, our right goes out to the T. So inhale, pick up the foot. Exhale, reach, step. Find that nice length and square shoulders, square pelvis. Connect the glutes, pull the belly in. Now inhale, exhale, twist the spine. Bend that left, that right elbow, twist the spine over to the right side. Feel that nice length through the front of the chest. Inhale, exhale, bend the elbow. Rotate the body back to the front. Square the hips, square the shoulders. Inhale, exhale, unravel to the other side. Pull that elbow back. Reach and stretch those arms away from each other. Inhale, exhale, pull the belly button towards the spine. Come back into center. Now inhale, open the arm out to the T. Straighten that right leg. Exhale, push into it. Find the belly connection. Bring yourself back in. Straight over to the left. Come up on the ball of the left foot. Find that right arm ready to move forward. Pick the knee up. Exhale, lunge. Reach the right hand. The left oh, hand comes out to the T. Body is square here. Inhale. Exhale, twist to the left side. Reach the body away. Pull the belly to the spine. Inhale here. Exhale, bend that elbow. Reach back towards the front. Squeeze the glute. Shoulders come down and back. Inhale. Exhale, unravel to the right. Reach. Inhale. Exhaling, pulling it back in. Now inhale, left arm comes out to the T, straighten that left leg. Exhale, pull it all back in. Good job. Let's do a little roll down. So inhale, nice and tall through the spine. Pelvis is in neutral. Exhale, nod the chin. Roll the spine forward one vertebrae at a time. Coming down into your maximum flexion. And then when you can't flex anymore, soft bend in the knees. Start to lengthen the tail. Bone away from you, lengthen the spine, reach those arms forward, and just breathe. Now from here, let's pull the belly in so we get a little bit of abdominal connection, and we're just going to pedal those hips. So you pedal one knee backwards, and then the other, just stretching through those gluteal muscles around the top of the hip before we go into our squats. <laughs> I've got two more. And then both knees softly bend, inhale, exhale, curl the tail under, tilt that pelvis under, squeeze the glutes, pass through your imprint, stack the spine up in neutral, lengthen the head and shoulders up, and bring those shoulders back down. Good job. Okay, so for our squats, we're gonna come into an incline squat to start with. So I like to use a monkey grip for this, the way that works. If you haven't seen in my previous videos, so you slide your hand through the loop with your palm facing up, and then you flick the palm back towards your face and wrap your thumb and index finger around the strap. Don't know if you can see on that one, so I'll bring this one closer to you. So, you slide your hand through the loop, palm facing towards the ceiling, then flick the wrist up, and wrap your thumb around one strap and your fingers around the other. And then what happens there is your hand is supported in that strap so that if you were to fall, and let go, it's, it's being held on by the joints of the wrist, so you're not gonna actually fall, okay? So that's a monkey grip. You don't have to use it, but, and especially if you have handles, you wanna keep with the palms facing, um, oh, sorry, in a normal hammer grip sort of position. But when I go on my inclines, I like to use monkey grip, it just helps me feel a little bit safer. So you're gonna turn around now, so you're facing your anchor point. I'm gonna stay facing this way so that you can see me, not the back of my head, okay? And then you're gonna step back from your anchor point and pull your elbows in close to your sides, okay? So you wanna connect those lats to start with and then find the belly connection, lengthen the spine, little soft bend in the knees and begin to lengthen those arms away. So I will come this way so you can just see the way I'm doing that. When you come into your first incline, it's important to do it slowly. So. Arms are connected, upper arm is in line with my body. Little soft bend in the knees, belly pulled towards the spine. I'm looking at my anchor point. And then I'm slowly going to lengthen those arms to my long line. So you can't see me in the picture here, but if I walk my feet forward, I hope I put a grippy mat under this one, then you'll see that I'm in one long line. My shoulders are connected. Okay, so I'm going to monkey grip the other direction. Let me just put a slippy mat. Under. If you have hardwood floors where your suspension system is, this is a really good little trick. These are, um, I think they're for your cupboards. They're kind of a little bit rubbery. You come in long sheets, you can get them at Ikea, you can get them in hardware stores. And I just cut them into squares and I place them underneath 
my mat at either end and it just stops the mat from sliding on the wooden floor when we start to go into our inclines. Okay, so you can also use like those um, anti-slide things that you put underneath rugs. Okay, let's get into our exercise. So I'm going to get my grip set up. Again, making sure your straps are even and you're facing your anchor point. And the, the level of difficulty depends on how low your angle is. So if I come really low like this, I'm gonna have to bend my knees. But if I come really low like this, then um, whenever I'm doing my arm exercises, it's a lot harder. If I'm at a higher angle like this, it's not as difficult, okay? So we're gonna start with our squats. So get your feet hip distance apart. Again, making sure that that ASIS is coming straight through the middle of the feet. Pull those elbows in and then begin to lengthen the arms down long away from your chest. So you should have one long line from your shoulder through the elbow, the wrist, and to your, uh, up the ropes to your anchor point. Then you're gonna pull the belly button towards the spine, connect your glutes, find the muscles in the legs, really start to power up. We're gonna drive those knees forward, lowering the hips. Then exhale, push into the heels, lengthen the legs. Inhale, lower the bum. Exhale, push away. We're gonna do one more slow like this, really controlling on keeping the pelvis as still as possible, driving through the back of the leg. Now we're gonna pick it up and get our heart rate up. So we're gonna come down, push away with the bum, bring it down, and push. Three, push away. Four, got four more, four. Make sure that you're not just letting momentum carry you through this movement, that you're actually working through the back of the legs. We've got one last one, pull it back. Push away, we're gonna add on. We're gonna pull the elbows in for a bicep curl. Lengthen away, drop the hips. Push away, pull, lengthen, push it back. Push, elbows back, lengthen the arms, bring it down. Up, biceps, lengthen, bring it down. Two more, push, pull, lengthen, down. Last one, push. Pull, lengthen, squat it out, come up, and we're just gonna do bicep pulses. So eight, release, seven, six. Keep that belly pulled towards the spine. Palms are facing towards you. Four, again, don't let the momentum carry you. Use your muscles. Last two, last one. Lengthen out, turn those palms, face each other. Come down into a wee squat so that you're about 90 degrees to the floor. And then pull your heels back just a little bit and then lift them up so you're on your tippy toes. Connect those shoulders down and back. Give yourself a little soft bend in the elbows and we're gonna pulse. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, eight more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, eight more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last one. Now keep those heels high, stand up tall. Lower those heels, relax the hands, nod the chin, roll your spine forward, one vertebrae at a time. Lengthen up to that long line and pedal one knee and then the other stretching through the hip. So I'll come to this side so you can see what that looks like in the hips again. So I've come down to my roll down, lengthen to my long line, and now I'm just going to bend one knee and then the other, keeping my belly connected. And it just stretches through these gluteal muscles. Okay, good job. We are going to come back into a forward lean using our shoulders. So away from your anchor point. So your anchor point is going to be behind you here. And you're going to slide your arms into the straps. Um, I'm going to lift mine up a little bit or I'm probably going to be out of the frame. So you're going to slide the straps into the belly of the arm, okay, the belly of the muscle. So to make it easier, you come closer to the elbow. To make it harder, you come towards the wrist, okay? So I like mine kind of just right where the fat bit of your muscle starts to narrow. That's why I like to have my straps for my leans, okay? So it's right sort of on your breakaway radialis. 
muscles out and make sure, always make sure your straps are even. Okay, there we go, good. Okay, so remember, I'm coming away from my anchor points. So my anchor is behind me. I'm gonna have my feet in parallel, hip distance apart, get your spine in that nice neutral, connect the glutes, shoulders come down and back. Inhale, pick up the heels. Exhale, hinge the body forward. Now, bring my elbows in line. I'm gonna walk my feet back a little bit because I lifted, I raised my straps so that I wouldn't come out of frame. Okay, now from here, you're gonna control the movement completely with the shoulders and the abdominals. Open the elbows out to the side, lower the chest, squeeze it in. So it's chest fly. Open it out, squeeze it in. So again, you can come standing more upright and it's less work, okay? So a little bit gentler on the shoulders, a little bit gentler on the abs. Or if you're really strong, you can step quite far back and really lower yourself and squeeze it in. I find I clench my fist too much, so I'm somewhere in between, reaching those elbows forward. Here we go, we're gonna open, use those pecs, close. Open and close. Do not let go of those lats or you can really injure your shoulders. So keep squeezing those shoulder blades down and back. Keep pulling your rib cage towards your belly. This is one of those exercises that I hate. It doesn't like me very much. <laughs> and in, we've got three more. Close, last two, inhale, last one, and bring your heels down, and then we're gonna do a roll down and stretch through those shoulders, so nod the chin, roll the spine forward, lengthen out, and then this time, I'm just gonna drop my chest here, just relax my whole body, and allow my hands to have this really nice stretch from the straps. And breathe, get that rib cage opening out to the sides and the back of the body rather than breathing through the front of the chest. And then connect those shoulders again, lengthen the spine to your long neutral spine. And then exhale, tuck the tail under, roll the spine up. One vertebrae at a time, good job. Okay, now we're going to come down into squats. So I like your, your anchor's still gonna be behind you. Um, and I like my straps to be kind of my armpit height, if that makes sense. So you need to step away from your anchor point first and then find that length in the straps. My anchor point is directly above me, so it's a bit easier for me to set up. So take the time to set yourself up properly and you're gonna get your feet hip distance apart and you want to feel like when you're holding onto your straps in your tension point. So your anchor point for this one actually you can decide whether it's behind you or in front of you. So try behind you first. It's a bit harder on the core, but if you find it's really hard for you to find that stability, then flip yourself around and do it facing your anchor point, okay? So then you want your feet to be in parallel, hip distance apart, connect those shoulders down and back, and we're just gonna start to squat. Slowly, slowly, slowly with control, and then pushing through the heels, standing up tall. Slowly, slowly, slowly with control, pushing into the heels and standing up tall. So now you might think, well, why have I got my hands in these straps here? It's so that they can help pull you back up. So when you come down, I mean, some people kind of only squat this far naturally, and then they're like, okay, that's good enough, and they push through the heels. But we want to really train our body to be able to come into that deep squat, nice and slow with control, while keeping the chest up. So that's why the TRX is really, is really good for that. And then you can pull into your straps a little bit while you push into the legs to come up nice and tall. We're gonna do five more, slowly down, and then push into the floor, put belly towards the spine, lengthen up. Slowly down, and lengthening up. We've got three more. Push into those heels, find the back of the legs. Last two. Last one, and up, good. Now we're gonna add a little jump with those squats, okay? So I definitely would recommend that you are facing your anchor point for your squat jumps, okay? Because, um, yeah, just because I do. <laughs> so you, it, it's a little bit like our squat leans, but we're not actually leaning that much. So you're gonna have your feet slightly wider than a hip distance, 
We're gonna come down, and then as we come up, it's a gentle hop, okay? So you're pulling into your straps, that's why facing your anchor point, you might get a bit more of a, of a forward pull. If you have your back to your anchor point, it could pull your shoulders back. That's why you face it. Okay, so feet are hip distance or slightly wider, and we're gonna bring those hips down, and then soft jump. You can hear my landing is really soft. Here we go, we're gonna do eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stand tall. Good job. Roll your body forward, give your shoulders a stretch, pedal the knees. Good job. Roll yourself up. Okay, we're gonna lower our straps down now. I have feet straps, so I'm just gonna use those, and we're gonna bring ourselves down onto the mat and put our feet in the straps. So, with your, um, your feet towards your anchor point, and you want your straps to be about the height of the bottom of your kneecap. So, if you have coming down from your door, so if your, your suspension system is anchored to a door, with your ropes coming down the door, you want to bring the ropes one foot away from the door and then just check that they land just below the patella, okay? And then you're going to bring yourself down onto your mat and we're going to put our feet in those straps. So, I'm going to move my mat back here because the floor is cold. And bring your body down the floor. So I'm going to put my feet in the straps right through onto my ankles. Now, uh, a lot of people find it a bit irritating with their feet in the straps like this, so I like to make sure that the strap comes below my malleolus, below my ankle bones, okay? And then flex your feet towards your face so that they stay connected into that strap, it's really connecting through the heel, okay? So you want it to be over the back of the calcadian, um, the talus actually, sorry, not the calcadian tenon, and then Flex the feet towards the face. And then bring your body down on the mat. So you should, your feet, if you're on a door anchor system, your feet are gonna be about one foot away from the door, not touching the door here, okay? Now we're gonna bend our knees, arms come down long to our sides. Inhale, exhale, roll the spine up. So you're picking those hips up with your knees still bent. And we're just gonna hold it here, finding that hamstring connection. Four, three, two, one, and lower those hips down. We're gonna add on, inhale, exhale, pick up those hips, and then lengthen the legs, straighten the knees. Find that nice connection, feel the way your legs have to work to maintain a parallel, and so your kneecaps are facing the ceiling. And you're lifting those hips, but not arching in the back. So you're using your abdominals to support your body in this long, neutral position. Okay, now we're gonna pull both knees in and push them away. Pull them in, push them away. So if you find that your knees are all over the place when you're doing this, put a towel or a ball between your knees to just help maintain that parallel connection. And push away. And if this is too much for you, just hold yourself on that long bridge line here, okay? Or maybe do one leg. And then the other leg, slowly, okay? Otherwise, pulling them both in. Reaching away, two more, and push, last one. Push away, inhale, exhale, bend the knees, and lower the hips, good. Lengthen the legs out long in front of us, reach our hands towards the ceiling. Inhale, eye gaze follows the hands as we begin to lower our hands, we lift our chin, and we reach forward. <clears throat> so we're up into our abdominal flex position, but I want to keep sending my pubic bone away from me so that my spine is as neutral as possible. My shoulders are nice and relaxed. My toes are pointed towards my face and I'm holding it here. Four, three, keep breathing. Two, one, and lengthen down and bend the knees. Inhale, exhale, push into those heels. Lift up those hips. Inhale, exhale, straighten those legs. Okay, so we're back in our hip bridge. Abdominals are supporting us. We're going to pull the right leg in. And now you can either move slowly one leg, 
then the other leg, or your reciprocal movement. We're gonna switch mid flexion and extension. So like scissors passing each other, switch, switch, switch. Keep pushing those heels into the straps. Keep lifting the bum, finding that abdominal control. Switch, three, two, one, bend them both in, and lower the hips, lengthen the legs away, arms come up, inhale, exhale, nod the chin, flex it up. Now this time we're going to pull the right leg in, we're going to bring the hands behind the head, and we're going to twist towards that right side, so we're into an oblique crunch. We're going to hold it here, and we're just going to scissor the legs, so we switch, switch, switch. Switch, so keep pushing into those ropes to find the tension. Push, push, keep lifting the torso up, using that left oblique. Switch, switch, four, three, two, one, reach away. So we're back into our starting position here. We'll rotate to center, send the leg away, lengthen the body down, reach your arms overhead, swing your legs side to side for a minute, inhaling, and then bend the knees, hands come in close to your sides, inhale, exhale, lift the bum, send those legs away. Now we're going to do abduction and adduction, so opening and closing the legs. So we're going to open, now don't make it really wild and crazy or you don't have control there. You want to open to that point where you feel the sideline of your leg is working really hard. Your belly is pulled towards your spine here to keep those abdominals and your lower back protected, okay? So your, your spine is in neutral. And then you're going to close it in and squeeze. Click your heels together. Open and close. Now you can do this with your hands reaching towards the ceiling to challenge your, um, your body. <laughs> Sorry, my brain's gone a bit bit. Challenge yourself a little bit more. Challenge another balance point, another lever. Close. Open. Close. Or you can keep your heart, hands down by your side. Open. Close. Now we're going to open and hold for eight. Little pulses. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Close it in for eight. Seven, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Release to neutral, parallel. Bend those knees in. Inhale. Exhale, lower the hips. Lengthen those legs away. Arms up towards the ceiling. Inhale. Exhale, nod the chin. Eye gaze follows the hands. Flex the body forward. Pull the left knee in. Hands behind the head. Rotate to the left side. So we're lifting up and twisting. And then we're going to move those legs. We switch. Reach that heel away. So keep finding that hamstring connection to push those legs away. And push. Keep flexing up and up and twisting. Really working those obliques. Keep pulling the belly button towards the spine. Push. Tension in the ropes the whole time. Last three. Two, one, and your left knee is in, you're still twisted to the left side, rotate back to center, send that leg long, arms come out in front of you, exhale, lower the head, reach the arms overhead, relax the legs, swing them a wee bit, good job. Okay, from there we're going to come onto our side, so we're going to take our right foot out of our foot strap and we're going to rotate over to our right side. So you're going to bring your forearm so it's parallel with the edge of your mat or if you find you have kind of really tight through the pecs and a lot of rounding through the shoulders then you want to angle your arm out slightly like a 40 degree angle. So when you bring your elbow directly under your shoulder then you're going to reach your hand towards the top corner of your mat, okay? So it goes a little bit of a 40 degree angle. If you have no shoulder issues, by all means,
hands just have it parallel with the edge of your mat. I like to have mine open to keep, remind me to keep my chest open. Also, if you're on a hard floor, you might find it feels good just to fold over the edge of your mat a little bit just to give your elbow some protection, okay? But the most important thing is make sure that elbow is directly underneath the shoulder. And then you're gonna pull that bottom waistline up, get your hips stacked directly on top of each other. Your bottom leg is folded so that your heel is in line with your pubic bone, okay? So heel, pubic bone, and elbow and shoulder are all in one long line. Your top leg is rotating to the front so that it's in parallel, and we're lifting that bottom waistline, connecting those abdominals, and feel like you're pushing that top of your hip away. Then we're gonna reach for the ceiling, inhale, exhale, push into that bottom knee, squeeze the glute, and lift up to your long line. Now, if this is good for you, stay here. If you wanna challenge yourself more, you're gonna reach that bottom leg out long underneath the top leg, and then you're gonna hold. Four, three, two, one. Now, if this is good enough for you, stay here. Otherwise, you're going to challenge yourself more. Now, I put my hand down for this because otherwise I fly around a bit. You're going to squeeze that bottom leg in and lower. Squeeze and lower. Squeeze. Lower. Two more. Squeeze and lower. Last one. Lift and lower. Hold it here. Now, bend that knee down. Lower the hip. And then just stretch yourself out for a minute. Feel nice and long. You can let that leg flick around a little bit if you want. I'm holding it there. Now, I forgot to mention, actually, if you're in a TRX system, your two ropes are on one pulley, so you're better to put both feet, uh, one foot into both straps when you're doing your side line. Otherwise, it's gonna just come down to the floor. So I'm sorry if anybody hit the floor. That was my bad. <laughs> okay, from there, we're gonna flip over to the other side. So take your left heel out, put your right foot in, okay? If you're, as I said, on a TRX system, put both straps onto the one foot, okay? And then you're gonna flip yourself over. So get your hips stacked, your bottom heel is in line with your pubic bone, in line with your hip bone, your elbows directly under the shoulder, and then you can either angle those fingertips out or keep them parallel with the front of the mat. Pull the belly towards the spine, lift up on that bottom waistline. So feel like you're pulling your ribs up towards the ceiling before you even start. Turn that top leg into parallel so you're already working on your adductors. Reach for the ceiling, inhale, exhale, push into that bottom leg, squeeze the glute, especially on that top leg, and find that connection. If that's for you, stay there. If you wanna challenge yourself, slide that bottom leg out. So it's just resting on the outside of the, hole, of the sole. We're gonna hold it here for four, three, two, one. If you wanna challenge yourself even more, then you're gonna pick up that bottom leg. And lower, five, and lower, four, three, two, one, and lower. Then lower the knee, lower the hips, lower the chest, and just relax for a minute. Good job. Okay, I'm gonna take my straps off there. So now I'm going to cross my right leg over my left and put it into my left strap. Then I'm going to, my bottom leg, my left leg is gonna go under my right, and go into my right strap, okay? Then I'm gonna turn back to that side line and then flip myself over onto my belly, okay? So if, if that was a bit complicated for you, by all means, just come close to your straps, slide your feet in, okay? So you're facing away from your anchor point for this, and we're gonna work through our planks a little bit. So we're gonna come up once you're set up with your feet and your straps, Get those hands directly underneath your shoulders. I'm going to turn around the other way while we do this. So, let me get my feeties and my straps. So remember, right crosses over left. Left comes under the right. It goes into the opposite strap. And then you flip yourself around, okay? So I've got my feet comfortable in my straps. And then I want to feel that tension 
from my system. Make sure as you're facing away from your anchor point, when you extend that leg out, you're not going to smash your door. So you need to pull yourself forward enough that you're going to be able to extend your legs when you're up in your plank, okay? So I obviously don't have that issue, but take the time to set yourself up. From there, hands come directly underneath your shoulders, okay? Again, if you have any wrist issues, you can roll up the bottom of your mat a wee bit. Sorry, this looks really awkward with my feet in the straps. Roll your edge of your mat up a little bit and put the heels of your hands on the rolled up mat so your fingertips are lower than your wrist joint and that just helps to lengthen the joint of the wrist and just take a bit of tension away from it. Okay, if you have no wrist, wrist issues, just keep pushing into those fingers, okay? A really good way to strengthen your fingers. So once you're ready, pull the belly to towards the spine. Find that nice long abdominal connection. I'm gonna pull mine in and adjust my clothing. And then widen your shoulder blades away from you. So feel like this space where, for me, my Y back with my shirt is, I wanna be pushing that in towards the ceiling, okay? Obviously I'm over exaggerating here, but I wanna feel a bit like a hunchback, okay? Keeping those shoulders wide is what's, what protects our shoulder girdle from and our rotator cuff from injury. So it's really important to set your shoulders up properly for your planks, okay? So widen those shoulders, pull the belly button towards the spine, pull the rib cage down towards the hips, lengthen the head away from the shoulders and get those lats down and back. Inhale, exhale, lengthen those legs out, okay? So we're in a really nice long plank here. We're holding it here. Four, three, Two, one. Now let's pull that right knee in, push it out, and the left in, push it up, right in, and out, left, and push, right, push, left. So this is coming from the abdominals, right, left. Don't sink in those hips. Don't allow your lower back to start to sag down like this. That's not good for your back. So keep hugging the belly towards the spine. Last one on the left, and then pull the right knee in, pull the left knee in, and just come down for a minute and give yourself a rest, okay? So my straps always come up on these, but never mind, okay? And just relax, swing your feet around a wee bit if that feels good for you. If not, just lay nice and still and catch your breath, okay? Deep inhale, expanding the ribcage, exhale, drawing it down and in. Good. Now from there, pull your belly button away from the floor, squeeze your glutes, straighten your legs and abduct them slightly. Elbows come in parallel with the mat and you're just gonna give a little gentle baby back bend, okay, a little cobra. So this is like our swan dive here, okay? And then slide those hands in line with your chest, Squeeze the inner thighs together, and then exhale, push away from the floor, pull the belly towards the spine, and come back into your plank, okay? We're gonna do triceps here. So your hands are in closer, elbows are coming straight back. So elbows come back, push away. Back, push away. You've gotta keep that belly connected. If this is too much, you can bend your knees in, and just work with the knees bent and hovering. Or if that's still too much, bring them down to touch the floor. Let's do one more. Down. Push away. Keep that belly connected. Inhale. Exhale. Pull the knees in. And just rest for a minute in a tucked position. We're going to add on straight away. Unravel to a full plank. Tuck it in. Unravel. Tuck. Unravel. Tuck. Lengthen. Tuck. Don't drop that lower back. Tuck, two more, tuck it in, last one, tuck it in, and lower the knees, lower the elbows, lower the chest, and breathe, well done. Okay, last two exercises. So push into those hands, get the knees down again, find that nice connection in your straps, hands are directly underneath the shoulders. Okay, this time we're gonna do a pipe. So you're gonna reach those legs out long and then you're gonna pull your hips up towards the ceiling and then lengthen them. Pull them up and lengthen. So squeeze your inner thighs together. Keep pulling the belly towards the spine. 
lengthen, pull it in, and out. Last one, and out. Now we're gonna go straight in. Both knees come to the right elbow, and out. Both to the left, so you're dropping your hip a bit. Out, to the right, out, to the left, to the right. Reach to the left, reach, last set, and the left, and then bend your knees, and bring yourself down to the floor, and you can take your feet out of those straps, and just rest for a minute, fold your, your, hat, fold your hands under your forehead, and just let your body be heavy on the floor. and close to your body, tuck your toes under, push yourself up, and then knees come forward, come down into your little squat to start with, feet are hip distance apart, glue your belly towards your spine, and then as you exhale, lift the hips up towards the ceiling, keep that belly glued to the thighs, inhale, let your body be heavy here for a minute, straighten those legs, enjoy that forward fold, Letting the whole weight of the spine decompress as you hang towards the floor. One more deep inhale here, and then as you exhale, soft bend in those knees, relax the hands, roll the spine up, one vertebrae at a time, stacking and lengthening the spine. All the way up, and you are done. Well done. I hope you enjoyed that today. Send me any questions that you have or any modifications that you might need for your home system and I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe.